All right, welcome to the Down and Dirty Breach and Attack Simulation demo. Um, today I'm going to be trying to fit a whole lot of information in a minute, so buckle up. Um, the first thing I want to highlight is that the Breach and Attack offering that we have today is really focused on evaluating the technology implementations that enable the incident response teams at our clients to identify and react to threats. Basically, they've spent millions of dollars on technology that's gonna generate some type of alert that will let the incident response team know that they have to go react to something. And our job during the breach and attack uh, simulation offerings is to validate that all of that stuff works the way you expect it to. Um, to the end where we're trying to answer that question, would you know if you were breached, right? Uh, in what scenarios would we know? In what scenarios do we have blind spots? And so that's really what the service is all about. Now, I'm gonna dive into the platform here. Um, the first thing to highlight is that this is a SaaS solution and um, we wanted to make sure that the agent deployment was really easy. Um, it really is as easy as clicking and downloading the agent and having it um, get set up in a matter of seconds. Um, this is important because a, a number of our different competition um, are deploying full VMs or full um, devices or some type of appliance, right? Um, that's not a requirement for us. You can deploy as many agents as you want as an, on as many systems as you want um, and run those concurrently and we have no issue with that. So we have a lot of flexibility in how the agent can be executed and how many systems it can be deployed to. Um, next, let's take a look at the workspace. The workspace is where the analyst, the purple teamer, um, the detection engineer is gonna spend the majority of their time. Um, in here, we have everything listed out. Um, all of our procedures are, are kind of categorized or grouped by attack flow or by the MITRE attack tactics. Um, as we dig into any one of these, um, you'll see anything that has a circle that means that that procedure has uh, play automation. Anything without a circle means it's just a write-up. So here you'll notice you, you can't automate that. Um, this particular one, you can. Now, another thing to note here is we can expand this and dig in. It gives us a lot of educational information on uh, what this attack is, why it's meaningful, and how to execute it manually. We also cover um, how do you do logging um, and um, how would you develop detections uh, for this particular type of issue? We also cover general prevention, right? Um, next, if you do happen to run the play, we do have an activity log that will track all your play execution. Also, we give the client the ability to set their visibility levels, right? This is an indicator of what they can see to what degree, right? Is it logged? Does that logging feed into detection, which might mean, um, you know, there's something weird happening in your environment, but we don't know if it's bad or not. Um, is that detection flowing into an alert that uh, should have someone react to it? And is that alert triggering some type of response ticket um, to the incident response team that would you know, force them or trigger them to triage that? And then lastly, of course, prevention. Now, one thing I wanna note about this is all the other BAS tools in the market, they populate this automatically when you run the play. Ours does not do that. We really focus heavily on the value of our educational content and of our engagement during that evaluation phase, right? And also empowering them to understand their techniques and really refine their detections uh, manually, right? Um, other things to be aware of that are valuable is we have threat actor and malware tags. Uh, this kind of answers the question, why should I care about this particular play? We're not throwing a thousand or a million uh, plays at you. Some, some of our um, competition will throw thousands of, of malware simulations um, at you. We are building um, solid behavior-based test cases instead of IOC-based test cases. Um, and if they wanna understand their value, they could quickly come and see something like this, which says, hey, 63 threat actors are using this, you should care. Um, Next, as you populate all that data, it's going to, um, in real time, update these summary charts, which are gonna give them an understanding of how, what level of coverage they kind of have at each major visibility level and at each phase of the cyber kill chain. Additionally, this allows them to understand where there might be ma major breakdowns. Um, and so uh, that's actually really useful when you're trying to understand how to prioritize remediation. Um, also, it might help you identify breakdowns where you need to get a different tool, you need to hire more staff or something uh, at that level. Um, if you are communicating upwards to executive audience, we also audiences, we also have, have this ability to download images of the charts or kind of change their views to a degree um, so that you can quickly drop that in a presentation or send it in an email to those interested parties. Um, we do also realize that you may have existing business processes and for those we have these data export formats so you can pull data out of our platform and actually put it into other platforms or generate additional metrics that are important to your business. Um, now 
I realize that this is just a point in time, and so that's why we've also developed a timeline. The timeline pulls into this uh, uh, this same concept of visibility levels. Um, so you can see how is your logging improved over time, how is your detection improved over time, and your alerting. Um, it also shows you not just where you got better, but where you got worse, which is something we've seen uh, in the real world over time. But this is really great for showing um, the value of your investments and tracking meaningful KPIs over time, which is something that a lot of SOC teams struggle with when it comes to detective control coverage. Now, last but not least, we have the heat map. Um, the heat map is something, once again, we're pulling into uh, these visibility levels in to give them an uh, overview of what level of coverage do we have for logging and detection and alerting, but it's done in a format that the industry expects to see. Uh, additionally for these, we have the ability to drill down um, to see how are we doing with one particular item. And then we also have the ability to dig into that item, uh, which brings us back to the workspace and automatically selects which what we want to kind of investigate. Um, I guess I lied there. The other thing I want to highlight is both for the operations and the playbooks. Uh, when you're creating these playbooks, if you come in and you click this kind of uh, little drop down here, uh, you get to see all of the individual plays uh, that are available to you. You can select whole sections. Um, you can also select individual items. But the most meaningful thing is that we can switch this um, to the tags view. And this allows us and our clients to very, very quickly um, uh, build playbooks that will simulate a specific threat actor. So if their threat intelligence, if their security people are telling them, you know, this particular bad bad guy group is coming after your industry, you know, we want to um, make sure that we're resilient to those attacks. We want to make sure that we understand what procedures they use and that we can detect them, right? That's what that's all about. And that's very meaningful to clients. Um, and uh, we are a little different in that uh, instead of creating a thousand uh, mini playbooks for each threat actor, we just use the tags so that you can create playbooks for the things that actually matter to you instead of having a bunch of superfluous options. Now, uh, the last, last, last thing we have here are operations. Um, it has a very similar functionality to the playbooks, but one notable thing that you're gonna wanna communicate to clients is that we can also schedule the execution of automated plays and playbooks, right? This is something that a lot of the other competition has, and it's something that we're gonna need to highlight if we're going to stay competitive. So um, that's a little bit over, but hopefully it's a good starting point for you.